welcome to another edition of Entrepreneurs in Fuego. We're documenting the journey of incredible entrepreneurs. And it's actually a special edition of Entrepreneurs in Fuego because we're at the 2016 Micropigmentation Conference, mm -hmm. uh, headed by our main man right over here, Bryce Cleveland. Yes. But with me, I have today the privilege and the honor, directly from Ontario, Canada, actually directly from Poland, via Ontario, Canada, right here to Phoenix, yeah. Arizona. Ren, I'm going to say this the right way. Yes. And correct me if I don't have the Polish accent, but you can correct <laughs> me. I might, I, might, I might give it a little bit of a Latin accent, but I'm going to say Renata Ruszewski. Perfect. Perfect. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing, thank you. I'm doing fine, thank you. Uh, and we've heard some incredible stories today. And you came from Poland how long ago? No, I live in Canada. Okay. For about 30 years. Okay. Yeah. And but pri but are you were yeah, born I was in born, you born, were born and raised in Poland. So you came into Canada mm -hmm. uh, when you were just a little... Uh, not that little, but... <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you go back at all? Um, I do, I do actually. I'm going back in a couple of weeks for another symposium and... yeah. Another symposium for... For micropigmentation, like for my makeup and scalp pigmentation uh, also. Which, which begs to uh, the question, this is a mm -hmm. worldwide phenomenon, correct? Yes. By the way, Poland yes. is one of the most peaceful countries in the world, mm -hmm. from the top 20%. It wasn't always like that. No, it wasn't, no. It wasn't always like that, but it's just... Uh, yeah, it's Europe, right? But it's, but it's filled with castles and, mm -hmm. and myths yes. and, you know, medieval things yes. and everything. It's also. an old it's country. Kind of it's yes. an old country, it's a beautiful. Old country, yes. Going back to probably 900... A.D., I believe. Um, 966, I believe. 966, yeah. somewhere around there. Yeah. Beautiful country. Yes. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. But you're now in Toronto. I'm in close to Toronto, about an hour away from Toronto, yes. And you are, sp you specialize in mm -hmm. micropigmentation, but also permanent... Uh, permanent makeup. So permanent micropigmentation makeup. is a form of cosmetic permanent um, tattooing, right? Mm -hmm. What Medical made tattooing. you go into this, into this field? into scalp pigmentation. Yes. I started with permanent makeup yes. and um, I actually did a little scar camouflage on <laughs> my mom when I was doing her eyebrows. And I used um, the needles and the pigments that we use for permanent makeup. And it looked wonderful until a few months later when the pigments started changing colors oh and she wow. came back and she said, can you just double check that little scar that you fixed for me last time because the hairdresser was like, staring at it and kind of looking into it. And I looked and saw uh, whatever seemed perfect when I did it, right? Um, the pigment just changed color and all the brown kind of faded and the orange stayed. So I just looked and I'm like, what happened? So I started researching and um, reading more about pigments and how it uh, affects um, the skin and, and the changes in skin. And I came up with scalp aesthetics, which were only using gray pigment, charcoal-based organic pigment. And it clicked in and it, it made sense because gray will never go uh, orange or a different color. It will always fade out to a lighter gray. So I, I started communicating with them and, and it made sense to um, train with them and learn as much as I can from them and um, basically to start using their pigments and their needles and their techniques. So, so let me understand something. So it's not going to change colors as it did in your mom, mm -hmm. which you, you, you know yeah. you were fixing stuff, but it's going to fade a little bit. Yeah, and so it's everything a fades. Everything fades. Yeah. Um, but so, so the, the procedure would be, I mean the long-term procedure would be to maintain. Maintain, Just exactly. Go back and as get long as it doesn't go to a weird color that you can't really control, right? Because right. nobody wants to walk around with orange or green or, or blue hat, right? Well, I know a yeah. few people. We've interviewed some mm -hmm. incredible entrepreneurs that have blue hair. Yes. And they're in their si but, but that's a different story. Yes. I mean, they have yeah. orange yeah. hair and everything mm -hmm. else. But mm -hmm. most of us do not yeah. want to walk around exactly. with, you know, orange pigment picture, mm -hmm. I suppose. Mm -hmm. And so y you get into this um, business, in the mm -hmm. permanent makeup business, for how, how long ago? Uh, 2010, so about six years. 2010. Yes. What did you do before? I'm a dental hygienist, a restorative hygienist, so I clean teeth and do fillings and stuff like that. I I guess I like working with little things and I'm um, detail oriented. You're meticulous about yes, what you do. Yes, and I also love working with people. And so in 2010, you see this opportunity to go into, into permanent, makeup. permanent makeup. And then 2014, I joined Scalp Aesthetics. Since 2014, mm -hmm. what has been 
the most satisfying thing that you have found for yourself? The most with, satisfying. With the scalp aesthetics. The most satisfying? It's still whatever was satisfying two years ago or five years ago or 10 years ago is the smile on people's faces when they first take a look in the mirror after the hairline is done and they study it and they look at it and they, I can see them moving from one direction <laughs> to another. I, I just can't get rid of that. Like it, it puts a smile on my face every time. Renata, is the transformation, right? It is the transformation, right? Even if it's that first appointment that is very um, settled and um, it, it, it doesn't show up as, as much as after three procedures, it's that first initial it's like, oh my gosh, I have a hairline again, <laughs> right? People love it, and I just love that um, the first few seconds that I see their face. It, it, uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't get any better. That, that's got to be no. such an incredible yes. personal experience, but at the mm -hmm. same time, because you're feeling so good about yes. somebody else exactly. and the life that you just yeah. transformed, that it makes you feel rewarded mm -hmm. and because you gave somebody a gift, for essentially. Sure. What is next for you? What is next for me? Um, I'm always learning, I'm always researching, I'm always trying to be the best I can. Um, definitely uh, definitely growing the business, definitely becoming busier and uh, seeing where, where this whole thing can take me. Well, you are in it's Toronto. It's a journey, yes. It's a journey, you're, mm -hmm. you're absolutely correct. You're in Toronto, but then you go back to Poland and you see that, you know, boldness is all throughout the all world. All over the right? place. All over the mm -hmm. place. And do you, <laughs> <laughs> when you when you go abroad, mm -hmm. where there may not be so much education for micropigmentation, in fact, there is little information. But you know here what? The there States, is. There are different companies, and what's amazing is everybody's striving to be the best that they can be, right? Mm -hmm. And also networking and learning from different people, different technicians. That's why we're here today. The energy that is in the room Incredible. and the knowledge, right, that everybody yep. brings together, right? People that have been doing this for a few years and even the new people that are just joining into the scalp aesthetics family. It's just it's just amazing. This is what we need what that you know, this is what we need to we grow together. We heard some statistics that are that are just incredible. Seventy five to eighty thousand people have done the procedure just in the past few mm -hmm. years. I mean it and it's and this is such a young Mm -hmm. Industry, right? I it mean, is very young. Very few people know about it. Very mm -hmm. few people know the alternatives yes. to maybe having your head sprayed or yes. wigs or transplants, or, or, transplants mm -hmm. or you know whatever other alternatives yes. are out there. But this is just a true magical mm -hmm. solution. Yes, for sure. For you know a balding head, and it's just. Many things transforming people's lives. It's just yes. a, just incredible. It's non-invasive. It takes only a little bit of time. No cutting into the skin. No, you know, time of work. And it works. It works for young and it works for old. You travel all the way from Toronto. Yes. Here to Phoenix, Arizona. Is this the first time you've been to Phoenix, Arizona? No, I have been to. Uh, I love traveling. Any chance I get, if I can, I just jump on. <laughs> um, yeah. You it's, have it's beautiful here. Your main it. your main clinic mm -hmm. uh, is in Toronto. In Hamilton. In Hamilton. Hamilton. Okay. Uh, are you planning to expand within Canada itself? I mean, how um, how's the ground basically? Is it fertile ground for expansion in Canada, or would you want to go to Europe, say, to Poland? You know what? There's always um, there's always room to grow, right? It's just um, basically educating the market because, like you said, just because it's a new right. uh, procedure, not a lot of people even know about it. So um, I think with time, the more you advertise, the more you explain to people, the more people start reading about it, start you know seeing the the advertisements and the treatments and. Uh, more and more people are getting more interested. And also as an alternative to um, transplants, which is a surgery basically, sure. um, or even sometimes to addition to a transplant, right? A, a lot of our clients are after transplant. Oh really? After, um, you know, they still don't have the density that, uh, that they would like to have, or they have scars that they want to camouflage. So, you know, it, you can also definitely work with um, transplant doctors and, and transplant patients and just improve that, just you know, give them that extra little bonus touch, right, that they are still looking for.
And, and that really boils down to education mm -hmm. and letting people mm -hmm. know, hey, even if you had a transplant, there may be still. something that still yes. I can do in order to um, sure. make your look a little mm -hmm. bit denser, if you yes. will, so it, it, looks, it yes. looks fuller. It looks fuller. And also, not everybody is a good candidate for a transplant. Oh, really? Right? Some people are. Some people just don't have enough donor area to, to ah, um, okay. you know, transplant from the back to the front, right? I'm still struggling to see whether I'm, I'm going to no, have you're, you're perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> no, I'm completely flattered. <laughs> no, I'm not going to go to sleep at all. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Renata. Well, I, I, I really appreciate it. You know, it's always it's always great to find a different angle, right? Yes. For 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 what you're doing for mm -hmm. this industry, and you bring that international angle. I mean, all the way from mm -hmm. Europe, from Poland, and in in Hamilton, in mm -hmm. Canada, where you have this thing, and uh, and, and you see it that. This is not this is not an industry that is confined to just a very small oh geographic no. area. But this no, is it's all wide. over. It's all over. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are losing their hair. Like, you know, it yeah, men are all over the world, right? <laughs> and even women, even women, right? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Alopecia patients or clients, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's happening more and more also. Thank you so much. Thank it was you a so pleasure. Much. It is it is just really an amazing experience for me. I always I always enjoy um, interviewing somebody that is from from Europe or from a foreign mm -hmm. country because you know I love to travel yeah. myself and love to know about the mm -hmm. history of mm -hmm. uh, of our world. Yes, and um, sure. that's something that you know when we grew up. I'm sure when you grew up in Poland, I grew up in South America. Geography was a mm -hmm. very very mm -hmm. important and history was a very important yes. subject in our in our upbringing. And just like with anything, education, right? The more you find out, the more you want to know, the more you want to see. Just like they, just like they say on TV, the more you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with that, we're out.